February 12th, 1910. It was the biggest snowfall on record in New York State. But the headline that ran in all the papers the next day wasn't about the weather. It was about me. The first invisible baby. At first, people showered my parents with gifts and interview requests. We were like royalty. But the novelty quickly wore off. I was hardly photogenic. The paper soon moved on to other freaks of nature, like Bat Boy and the girl with three legs. I went from front page to back page to no page. Once the spotlight faded, the difficulties of raising an invisible child sunk in. My parents put me up for adoption. I was an outcast, an outsider. So I did the only thing I was good at. I disappeared. I moved downtown and started working as a small-time PI, mostly using my invisibility to spy on cheating spouses and two-bit criminals. I paid the bills, but I longed to be normal, visible. I knew I shouldn't have let my heart get involved, but Matilda was the first dame who showed any interest in a visibility-challenged guy like me. Then, as quickly as she came into my life, she was gone. Dick Marlowe, Invisible Investigator. Where? The Pigeon Club, eh? I'll be right there. betray the mind. Isn't that right, my dear? <laughs> you see, with this machine, I shall capture the essence of your invisibility, and then I can control the world! <laughs> Don't be too careful, you wind up like waltzing Matilda on your wind. Don't be too patient, you'll never start this no more.
knew you couldn't give me up, Matilda. Oh, Dick. The minute I saw your face, I knew I couldn't go through with it. 